Girl, look, at this point, both regular Spice, Old Spice, and Carly Rae getting on my nerves with the Victim Olympics. I'm ready for both of y'all to go. But is y'all ready to talk about it? Let's juice. Come on, Blazer. It's a beat for me. Wow, 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 What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Voodoo Doll TV, back with a quick little jokes or whatever the case may be. And we over here discussing love and hip-hop victim Olympics. Yeah, that's what we gonna call this, the victim Olympics. Because why? Carly Red crying every two seconds, and I'm over here saying, fix your face before the doctor have to fix it again. Spice, regular Spice, old Spice is over there playing the victim since she was victimized last season. Now she's going to carry this victimization all the way through this doggone season. I'm tired of both of y'all. I'm tired. But before we get into it, y'all, do me a favor, like the video. It's free to like the video. It's a free way to support the channel, get the um the video out in the algorithm. Also, if you would like to support monetarily, I am not monetized, so you hit that little cash app in the corner right there, fat, and it's going to be all cool. But, you know, this Carly Red thing and Spice thing is getting old. It's tired. I'm over it. I'm done. And then we got uh, Mendeecees, Collateral. He's over there threatening to leave Yandy Luther the King. And I'm over here saying, please, just, no, matter of fact, don't leave her. Bring her back to New York. Do not leave her down in Atlanta. Also, we have um, Zell Swag still missing on Big Bike, Santana. And then who else we had on here? Oh, and Carly Red going down to the $5 footlongs of Canada asking them for prayers so she could do a crying scene. Girl, you don't know who... Girl, we gonna get there because I'm... This This really blew me. Anyway, grab your things. Grab your earbuds. I don't know. The episode was all right. I think because they in Canada and it's cold. I don't like it. But let's get into it, girl. So the episode opens up. They are in the van going somewhere. I don't know if they're coming from. Yeah, I think they're coming from the uh, the snow thing they did, the snow day. So they're in the van, and Zell Swag cannot get over the fact that he missing his big bike. Talking about Santana. He said he hadn't spoke to him. You know what I'm saying? He said he missed his man or whatever. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's bad because his best friend, Paris, y'all remember her from Love and Hip Hop um, LA or whatever one it was? She had called him drunk and was like, you know, they say a drunk person speak a sober mind. They say she called him and told him, that's why you moved all the way to Atlanta to be with a nigga who don't want you, bitch. And he was like, oh, you right. He said it hurt his feelings, but when he really started thinking about what the hell was happening, he said Paris didn't tell no lies. He said, now, you know, Paris is one of my big bike friends as well. You know, I love a good big bike. He said, but um, ultimately, in her joking, which I feel like she was telling the truth, and when people want to know the truth, pay attention to Mad Day in the joke, okay? But anyways, he said that, you know, after he thought about it, she was right. He said, damn, bitch, I'm getting played by a big bike. And look at Carly. He said, well, bitch, what you crying for? She was like, well, because... <laughs> It's just crazy because you're such a good friend and you have somebody and people care about you. And I don't have anybody. It's just me. I'm always the person taking care of everything and everybody. And I don't have anybody to lean on. And Zell, the fact that you have somebody tells me everybody needs somebody sometimes. And I don't have nobody. It's just me by myself or whatever the case may be. So they over there trying to console Carly because Carly putting 20 on 10 as usual. Where is your child? The one who looked just like you. Who Remember she was trying to jump that uh, lady who looked like a man? Y'all remember that season? Where's your child? What you mean it's, it's you and only you? Anyway, Carla said she go to sleep by herself and wake up by herself. And it's just her by herself. And I said, girl, this is an easy remedy. Go get you a nigga. You got buku of them, girl. Just tell them one of them come sleep over there or something. Girl, but other than that, we don't want to hear this ugly ass shit, Carly. Carly, <sighs> why? You know what? Never mind, Carly. Not today. Get off of here. So now young Jock, old Jock, is sitting down with Kendra. And basically they're talking about how he's trying to get the little girl acclimated, the new baby, into the family. He said he got a kickball contest he's doing with the family. He wants the little girl to come. He said, and Kendra, I know you said you didn't want to meet the girl, but I'm going to have to invite this girl to get my baby acclimated. That's just how that goes. 
Kendra's still on that ignorant ass shit, talking about I don't have to meet her, and if she come, keep her on that side of the gym, and whoop the whoop the whoop. I'm saying, Big Mama, why is you so pressed? Listen, you being feeling like you don't need to to have no conversation with the girl ain't gonna stop him from going over there and drop that pole off. That don't go like that, Kendra. Grow up. You already grown physically. Grow up. I don't understand this, but you want to act like you really love that child. You don't love that child. You just tolerating that baby because you want that nigga. Can we talk? That's what this is all about. You tolerating the baby because you want the nigga. So anyways, he gets on the phone with the girl and the baby. The little girl seemed so excited to hear from him. She was like, oh, where my sisters? He invited the lady out to the, um, to the kickball tournament and the lady was like um yeah we could come up and pull up or whatever she said but at the end of the day you need to start carving out time to spend with your child and he said well what you mean that's what i'm doing duh i'm inviting her to a kickball game you know woot the woot but the girl said no he need one-on-one i guess is what she want um baby mama number 12 what is it that you want from jock do you want that pole Cause if you want it, he gonna come bring it to you. Y'all know how Jock is. All you got to do is say that. Is that um cold word for bring that bring that thing here? You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm confused because if he's trying to get the baby, rather it's go and play kickball or whatever, he's still doing his due diligence. I don't understand what exactly you want from young Jock. And look at Kendra over there while he on the phone. She waiting for the lady to say something crazy so she could be like, oh, bitch, I knew it. I knew you was trying to fuck my husband, bitch. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Type shit. But girl, like I said, Kendra, bitch, you you probably sleep with one eye open sleeping next to this nigga. Because there's no way you living in a comfortable relationship with him when you can't even accept the fact that he done cheated, had a baby, and you still gonna be with him. You saying you have, but you have not, baby. You still have not. And at the end of the day, rather you cool with the girl or you know the girl or you talk to the girl or you meet the girl or not, when he won't drop that zick off, he's going to drop it off, girl. Come on now. So young job telling the girl, like I said, that look, girl, I'm doing what I can. Bitch, I'm, I'm inviting you and the baby to the kickball contest. What else do you want? The whole family going to be there. This is in remembrance of my mama. So I need her there. I want you to come to y'all pull up, pull over and pop out. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like all that ugly ass shit you on this line harassing me about. I don't want to hear that ugly ass shit or whatever. And this the worst part. Kendra over there in the corner acting like it's all cool. Girl, Kendra is 45 hot. Do you hear me? That whole hotter than a prostitute's cooch. Oh, yeah. She going to act like it. Oh, because I love the baby. No, you don't, bitch. No, you don't. You love the baby because you love that nigga. You care about the baby because you don't want to make your man mad. Girl, get y'all off of here. Get off of here. So now Yandy Luther the King uh, FaceTimes Mendeecees, Mendeecees. What's his name? Collateral. 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 She FaceTimes Collateral because she said um, he didn't come on a trip. They haven't been talking or whatever. And she's trying to see what's up. She's trying to check the temperature. Now, Mendeecees is still mad because he feels like, bitch, you trying to give away eggs like you the Easter money, bitch. You trying to run for city council like you Tamika Mallory, bitch. You doing a little bit too much and you not consulting me. So she's like, Mendeecees, I know that I've done some things that you don't like, but I'm begging you, please don't put me up for Collateral. And number one and number two, how can we fix this Mendeecees how can we fix this I know I want to give a, a egg to my play sister who's really my cousin but I love you too I don't want to jeopardize us but I still want to give an egg to my play cousin my play sister I'm sorry so Mendeecees on the other line and was like girl look yeah, the girl, fuck all that ugly ass shit, girl. At the end of the day, bitch, you over here entertaining woot the woot. You ain't worried about your man. You ain't been rubbing my feet. You ain't making me feel like a man bad enough. You're making all the money around this bitch. I got to adapt to you because you the breadwinner. I done had to put an apron on. I'm tired. I'm sick. I need some money. Bitch, you might go up for collateral tonight. That's what he said. He said either that or I'm going to just have to move out because what we're not going to do is this. This is what we're not going to do. You're not going to emasculate me and you're not going to uh, uh, d- disrespect me and, and forget about me, bitch. Either I go up, either you go up for collateral or I'm moving out. That's it. Now, which one is it going to be? And, you know, Yandy was, it was a hard choice for Yandy. So Yandy said, well, don't make me pick now, men DCs. Let me go ahead on and um think about it and sleep on it. And I'm going to call you back. He said, well, bitch, you got 24 hours. Let's move on.
So now we move to the next scene. Rennie, this must be the clear side of Rennie. But Rennie went and found some $5 foot loans uh, who alleges themselves to be indigenous to the land of Canada, which we all know is Kibbity Cap. Anyway, she said she wanted to get in touch with spirituality or whatever since she let them other clear people pray over her the last time. So the man gets around the fire and he starts telling the stories about his people, right? And talk about a slap in the face. You are looking at a clear man. Talk to us, or talk to them, I'm sorry, about how the clear people came in, took their land, took their religion, took their spirituality, took their names, took their all of that stuff, and how uh, basically they colonized them. And I'm over here saying, is he talking about the man in the mirror? What you mean the clear people colonized? Sir, you are the colonizer. Oh, my God. And then look again to Luther the King. Oh my God, that story sounds so familiar to what black people have gone through in America. Oh my God, I can't believe we connect so much. And this the bitch with the honorary degrees, right? Duh, duck, duck, goose, because he using your story. Girl, you ain't to get your ugly ass off here, please. So anyway, over in the corner, they finished the bullshit story. And, and look at Carly. Look at Carly, bitch. <laughs> And he over there telling her, yeah, because it seems as if you, you do a lot for everybody and nobody does anything for you and you need to prioritize yourself because if you don't prioritize yourself, you're not going to be any good. And she get the crying girl. This was the worst part though. Carly turned around and asked the man to pray for her. And all of them duck, duck gooses got in a circle, bowed their head while this, this person pray in whatever language we don't know, girl, it was a time. I say, see niggas, that's why, that's why they, that's why it's so easy to colonize us. You got this man, what? Girl, you don't know what this man's saying and who he praying to? Girl, call it, please. Girl, call it, you do too much, bitch. That's why the people don't want to fuck with you, girl. You over there crying all like this because you ain't got nobody, bitch. I know everybody needs somebody sometime, but you got to go find somebody then, now. Come on, now. This is ridiculous. They ain't getting on my goddamn nerves. Now, Yandy Luther the King is over there talking to um uh Rashida, bitch. You know, the bitch. She said she coming up on her 25-year anniversary. You know what I'm saying? And Rashida, you know, she been cheated on, beat on, left on, you know, in all nine. And, and nine, they going west. So, uh, Yandy Luther the King needs some advice because she don't want to go up for collateral, right? So, Yandy Luther the King was like, Rashida, bitch. Kirk with the three in rings done took you through the ringer. Here, bitch, when you listen, when I tell you that nigga done dragged you like a dog in the streets, bitch. Stepped on you, shitted on you and everything, bitch. So, I need some advice because Mendeecee is trying to put me up for collateral. She said, so look. He said he going to move out unless I give him some attention. She said, he told me. That I'm not making him a man or whatever the case may be. And look at Rashida. Oh, no, bitch. We ain't doing that now. Oh, no. Because, see, I remember when Kurt had dragged me through the streets. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I had to buy him a, a fourth earring. She said, so we're not going to do that. See, what you need to do is go back home and love on your nigga. Because if you don't love on him, somebody else will. Either that or you're going up for collateral, bitch. Now, what you want? Pick your poison. What you want? You want to get dragged or you want to get put up for collateral? What was it going to be? Just take it, girl. Let uh, Mendeecees drag you up and down the streets. I know I did it for 25 years and I came out on the other side. And I'm still standing and so can you. You know, she said, so listen, just do whatever he say. You know what I'm saying? Let him let him make a fool of you. And woo -de -woo -de -woo -de -woo. And, and, and it'll work out in his favor. Everything gonna work out because this is what marriage is all about, girl. Now, I want to save your marriage, bitch. Go ahead on and let him drag you down the street, all right? And she said, okay, so let's move on from these duck ass hoes. Over by the bar. Uh, Saucy, not Saucy, <laughs> hell, Zell over there talking about how he ain't worried about Saucy no more, and he could not say his name, he don't need to be talking to Saucy or talking about Saucy, he said, actually, if he don't say his name, then they ought to pay him a hundred dollars a day, because they want him to pay them, pay them every time, I'm sorry, he say his name, and right after that, he went to do a toast and said, this is the big back, and they said, yep, see, you couldn't help but resist it, listen, Zell, go get your nigga back. Go get your nigga. I know earlier you said, you know, I always have my nigga back. I want my nigga to love on me and woot the woot the woot. You know, Santana might not be capable of love, but ultimately just go get your nigga back, baby. Go 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 get him back, fat. Get off of here. So now they go curling. 
I know most of us Negroes don't know what this is. I've only seen it one time watching the Winter Olympics. It's just throwing a marble on some ice, girl, bitch. A big ass marble that looks like a fucking flying salsa, bitch. Anyways, why these niggas is curling, I don't know. I guess when in Rome, bitch, you finish the rest. And look at this hole right here. Look at Jennifer Model Girl. This whole trying to do curling in a fucking mink, a, a faux mink. Girl, you can't make this shit up. Jennifer, this is why um, Nick Cannon dropped you, bitch. Yeah. You, 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 not, you not the brightest crayon in the Crayola box. I, it's obvious to me. That's why Nick, Nick said, get up out of here. Nick said, cancel that bitch. I'll buy me a new one. Girl, get off of here, ducky. Moving on to the next scene. They at the kickball day. Jock tells Kendra, oh, uh, my baby mama called. Let me go outside and get my baby. Now, Kendra is over there saying, Lord, please, if this girl come in here, please don't. I don't want her none, nowhere around me. I don't want her to say nothing to me, bitch. You ain't got nothing to say. And I'm saying, oh, you're going to try to be nasty to the girl after he didn't invite the girl. Girl, whatever. So he goes outside to get her. And the girl said, well, I'm not going to come in, but I'm going to give you the baby. She was like, I got something else to do. That girl ain't got nothing else to do. She just knew that she probably felt that that energy wasn't where it need to be. And I'm glad you didn't go in because this whole Kendra is pressed like a panini. Uh, what she don't know is if you want to take her man, you're going to take her man again. Like you did. Okay. But anyway, so Jack comes back in the gym. With the little girl, pretty little girl, ain't she? Comes back in with the little girl. Uh, everybody is super excited to see her. I love the fact that his other family and children ran over to her and embraced her. I think that is super dope that they get, they get in this relationship or whatever. So he pulls Kendra on the side and was like, you know, my mama did tell me I got a good woman and I should take good care of you. She said, if that woman, you take care of that woman, that woman going to take care of you. He said, so thank you, baby. You done let me cheat on you. I done had 50 let them churn on you. I probably got one or two more on the way and you going to stick by me. So this is what a good woman is all about. So thank you, Kendra. That's what he said. And Kendra say oh Jaseel you're welcome I know that I'm your little trash mat but don't worry about it Jaseel we married now we is doing this till death do us part and I love your mama and I love your new daughter so I understand Jaseel and I'm happy that I can be here for you to use as a stepping stool thank you so much Jaseel and he said and I love you Faith I love you and she said and I love you too and then we moving on to the next scene so now the crew is at dinner and Ice Spice, no, not Ice Spice, regular Spice, Old Spice. Spice looks across the table to tell Bambi, she said, Mina Bambi, I just wanted to let you know, me wanted to let you know that I'm doing a song with your, your ex-husband and I don't want you to feel away. And so Bambi was like, bitch, is it a diss track? And she was like, no, girl, ain't no fucking diss track. But Bambi, didn't you make a diss track? If it was, then what, what, what's of it? I'm confused. But anyway, uh, Ice Spice, no, regular Spice, Old Spice. Old Spice said, me no diss track. Me no, me no be part of no, of no diss track on you. Me no, me no, me no do that. Me no do that. Me, me will tell you before if me do a diss track. And it, me no understand no diss songs, no diss words. And look again, the Luther the King. Well, you, oh, you know. Spice, you, you know, you want to uh, invite everybody to perform. You and Carly Rae should perform you all song together. And look at um, Spice. Now, there you go. There, somebody always trying to make it like something is not. And look at Spice. Me don't want to do a song with Carly. Me, every time me think about Carly in the song, I, I get a little whiplash. I get to thinking again about what she's done to me. And, and I don't like it. Me, me don't want to do the song with Carly. Me don't want to do the song with Carly. And so Carly Rae on the other side of the table saying... But Spice, I didn't do anything to you. And look at Spice. You heard me. You heard me. And uh, Carly Red on the other side of the table saying, But Spice, you said you was going to pop me upside my motherfucking head. And even Bambi jumped in and was like, Yeah, Spice, I ain't going to lie. It was coming off aggressive because, bitch, you, you know, you, you, it, it got physical. And when it get physical, you know, it makes Carly scared. And Carly don't want to be scared no more. You know, you just giving big bad wolf. So go ahead on and leave Carly alone. Carly scared of you, girl. Leave my friend alone. So uh, the other girls jump in to kind of like, you know, be like, you know, even Sierra. Yeah, I ain't going to lie, Spice. You did get a little, um, you know, physical. And Spice said, me not get physical. 
Me no touch her. Me no touch her. I just talk like this. Did me no touch her. Me no touch her. Me never touch the Carly. But if Carly wants to say that she's scared of me, what, what, what she scared me for? Because why does she not scared of you? You the one hit her in her face. You hit her in her face. Why she scared of me and, me and, and she not scared of you? Why, why me and no you? And look at Bambi. Because Spice, you dark skin and you aggressive. She didn't see that. <laughs> but nah, she was just like, no, but you just scan Carly. Don't do that. You scan my friend. How we going to do shows if we change the faces if you rearrange her face? We don't have time to get her a new face, nah. So leave her alone. Let her get used to this face or whatever the case may be. And you got to stop scaring my friend. My friend is scared for her life. And look at Spice. Me no think she's scared for her life. Me no think she just, me, we both from the island. She not scared of her life. She just say that, bitch. She, she's scared of me, but she not scared of, of Sierra. Sierra the one hit her in her face, but she's scared of me. Oh, this is some bull. You just want to make me out to be the victim. I'm no, I'm no, I'm no bully. You want to make me out to be aggressive and a bully. I'm not, I'm no, me no bully. Me no bully, me no bully, me no bully. You, you, you're not gonna do this to me again. I, you, you're going to make it seem like I'm just a horrible person. And look, all oh, everybody go around. Look at me going home. Me going home. Me, 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 me going home. Me the queen of dance hall. Me going home. And it's like, no, Spice, don't go. Don't go. And she's like, me, me always, they, they always want to take me and make me a, a bully and, and aggressive. I'm not aggressive. I've gone through this last year. I can't go through it again. Me going home. Me going home. And they say, no, Spice. Spice, please don't go. Please don't go. And even three earrings came over there and said, come on, Spice, stall him out. Stall him out now. Don't go home, girl. We only got one more day on the trip. Stay your ugly ass here now. And she said, me go pack my bags. Me packing my bags. And I, me, me, me done with me, Carly. Me done with Carly. And, and three earrings was like, now, Spice, you got to stop with all of that, girl. You know you a little bit aggressive, but I'm scared to tell you, now. Come on, now. Don't do like, don't do that, now. And look at Yandy Luther the King. Spines, please stay. If you leave, then I'm not going to have anybody. And what am I going to do the last 24 hours before I have to go home and face the fact that either I'm going to be smutted out and ran over like a dog or if Mendeecees is going to put me up for collateral. Please stay with me. Come sleep in the room with me. I'm scared. Please don't leave, Spice. Please, Spice, I'm begging you. Whatever you do, this might be my last 24 hours on earth. I don't trust that nigga. He might come in here, you know what I'm saying, and grab me up tonight. He might catch a flight, girl. Please, Spice, don't leave me, Lord. Please, I need that type of aggression for protection. So uh, in the truck, basically, Carly was like, she never take um responsibility or accountability for nothing that she do. Everybody over there ain't going to do nothing but, but coddle her and make her seem like the victim. But at the end of the day, I am the perpetual victim, not her. Now, she just want to ride on the coattail of that shit that happened last year. But it's me. I am the victim, oh, baby, not her. And she, what she not going to do is act like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she ain't crazy and aggressive. And she wouldn't pop me upside my motherfucking head. That's what she not going to do. And y'all hoes fake as fuck because y'all ain't say nothing either. And it was like, shit, bitch, we scared too. The fuck you want us to say? The fuck? So anyway, back at the um at the front door, Spice said, me still want to pack me bags. Me packing me bags. Me going home. Me going home. And Yandy Luther the King was hugging on her tight. And she said, oh, my God, you were my last line of defense. It wouldn't surprise me if Mendeecees come tonight like a thief in the night. It snatched me up, throw me in the trunk, drive across the Canada state lines and bring me to a dungeon where them people could come pick me up. I don't want you to go. Oh, no, I don't want you to go. But please, just consider staying. And Spice was saying, me packing me bags. And that was the end of the episode, girl. Let me tell y'all something, girl. Fuck all this ugly ass shit. Spice, shut your ugly ass up. We don't want to hear the shit no more. You had your victim time last year. It's over. Carly, we don't want to hear your ugly ass no more neither. You cry at the drop of a hat. It's given, rehearsed. I don't like it. Spice, you're getting on my nerves. 
Carly getting on my nerves. Matter of fact, everybody on this doggone cast getting on my nerves. Miami be drag. Listen, my love and hip hop, Miami girl. Y'all don't hold a candle, girl. Anyway, what y'all think about this episode, girl? This ain't even gotta be this long. Drop down in the comments. Please like the video if you have not already. Also, follow me on all platforms on Rumble, especially Twitter, Twitch, everything. TikTok, everything, Voodoo Doll TV. Also, you guys, if you would like to support the channel, please hit the little cash app in the corner right there and support the channel, fat fat. Anyways, I'm looking forward to see what y'all think about this episode. Drop down in the comments, like, share, rate, and all that other stuff, and I'll see y'all hoes later. Bye. Mr. Carroll, how you give the Voodoo Doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the Voodoo Doll is? The nigga you just had up here.